Canada was worried about Soviet aircraft crossing the Arctic Ocean after World War II and perhaps dropping nuclear bombs on sites in North America. The Canadian Air Force created the CF-100 Canuck, an in-house designed fighter interceptor, in response to this. The Canuck was a long-range all-weather interceptor with a sophisticated radar system that made its maiden flight on January 19, 1950. It developed into one of NATO's most valuable aircraft and among the greatest all-weather fighters in the world. Additionally, under the difficult zero-visibility circumstances, NATO soldiers in Europe utilized it to defend the western skies against Soviet strikes. The Canadian government realized the necessity for a self-sufficient military aviation sector during the Cold War and expanded defense funding accordingly. A brand new jet-powered interceptor aircraft that can monitor Canada's northern area in inclement weather has been discovered by the Royal Canadian Air Force. According to Air Marshal Wilfred Curtis, no aircraft, planned or current, could achieve these requirements. Avro Canada won the contract when the Air Force published a call for proposals in 1946. The team started working on the XC-100, under the direction of Chief Engineer Edgar Atkins and with advice from veteran de Havilland aircraft designer John Frost. The CF-100 aircraft's second prototype was lost in an accident in 1950, although the first flew successfully the following year. Edgar Atkins and Avro Canada fired a number of members of the design team in order to address a structural design fault. They created one pre-production aircraft with a local Orenda 2 engine and one basic modification. 30 Avro Orenda engines and 10 pre-production fighters were committed to by the Canadian Air Force. Mark III, the first production variant, made a successful landing in 1952. The models were dubbed CF-100 and received minor modifications. Known as the clunk because of its loudness during takeoff, the Avro Canada CF-100 Canuck was the first fighter interceptor built in Canada to be produced in large quantities. A basic tubular fuselage equipped with avionics, fuel tanks, and machine guns calibered at 8.5 mm was created by engineers. The Canuck had a maximum speed of 650 miles per hour, a range of up to 1,000 miles, a short takeoff run, and a weight of about 17 tons. Because of its sophisticated radar set and fire control system, it was designed to withstand any weather condition, including nighttime, and to operate at high altitudes. The CF-100 fourth prototype, which was built by Avro Chief Development Test Pilot Zarabko Zarovsky, achieved supersonic flight without the use of rocket power on December 18, 1952, when he dived from 45,000 feet to Mach 1.1. One of the few interceptors with all-weather capability was the Canadian Canuck, a highly prized aircraft in NATO. Many thought that Europe would be the next front in the Cold War as the Western Alliance NATO came into being and the conflict grew more intense. In order to thwart any prospective attacks on the West, Canada pledged to provide ground soldiers and squadrons. The Royal Air Force Ferry Command established the North Atlantic Ferry Route during World War II, which these squadrons followed. First to complete these flights were the F-86 Sabres participating in Operation Leapfrog, which saw four flights along the route between May 1952 and September 1953. But with no other night fighter in all of Europe, the Canuck replaced the squadrons of F-86 Sabres after the program's high brass acknowledged it as an all-weather night fighter interceptor. This gave NATO a potent intersection capability. Between 1956 and 1957, the CF-100 Canucks, operating under the title Operation Nimblebat, guarded North American airspace from possible invaders. NATO pressure led to the deployment of four CF-100 Canuck squadrons to a station in Europe between 1956 and 1962. 
In North America, the Canucks usually wore their natural metal finish, but when they were sent abroad, they were painted in a disruptive British camouflage pattern. Among NATO's fighters, the CF-100 was the only one that could fly in low visibility and bad weather. Nine squadrons of the Royal Canadian Air Force were stationed there. The CF-100's mission and armament evolved throughout the course of its three-decade service, moving from its original 8.5mm machine guns to guided missiles, rockets, and early Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles. During the Cold War, the United States and Canada formed the North American Air Defense Command, NORAD, which was home to many operational CF-100s. During the Cold War, the CF-100, along with U.S. Air Force-owned, Convair F-102 and F-106, shared duty in defending Canada and the U.S. from Soviet incursions. At the Farnborough Air Show in England in 1955, test pilot Zurichowski of Avro Canada conducted a stunning demonstration flight in his Canuck, executing a falling leaf. Experts in the aviation business and onlookers alike were taken aback by this remarkable achievement which prompted Belgium to buy more than 50 CF-100s and the U.S. Air Force to almost acquire several of these fighters. The United States Air Force required jet-powered all-weather interdiction and surveillance aircraft when it entered the Korean War in the early 1950s. The English Electric Camber Medium Bomber and the Avro Canada CF-100 Interceptor were two foreign designs that the U.S. government contemplated purchasing and modifying. But because of the Canucks' limited range and payload capacity, the English competitor was chosen and subsequently developed into the Martin B-57 Camber program. The Canuck Interceptor was intended to last 2,000 hours by Avro Canada, but during development, it was found that the airframe could operate for more than 20,000 hours before needing to be retired. 692 CF-100s in all were built. The last version that was suggested was meant to bridge the gap between the conductor and the AF-105 Aero Supersonic Interceptor, which took its place. But the CF-105 program was discontinued in 1959 due to a contentious decision made by the Canadian government, which seriously hurt the country's aviation sector. Even after it was cancelled, the Canuck continued to serve in combat until 1963, when the quicker McDonnell CF-101B Voodoo took its place. The Canuck remained in electronic warfare roles and provided recognition training to the 414 Squadron of the Canadian Forces. In 1981, the last Royal Canadian Air Force Canucks were taken out of service, leaving the CF-100 Canuck as the sole aircraft in the country still built in large quantities. As the Canucks' operational history drew to a close, its legacy remained indelible. From defending North American skies to standing as a testament to Canadian engineering prowess, the CF-100 Canucks symbolized more than just a military aircraft. It embodied Canada's commitment to self-sufficiency and excellence in aviation. Despite its eventual retirement, its enduring impact on NATO defense and its surprising longevity far beyond its initial projections cemented its place in history as a true Canadian icon of the skies.